should we leave right away? Yeah. Yeah, try Welcome to Behind the Mic Radio. I am your host, Dawn Mack, and so very glad to have you with us. And it's Monday, and uh, I know a lot of folks probably had today off, as they did Friday uh, around the holiday weekend, but uh, it's a good Monday around here. We had a good Friday on Friday, but today is a good Monday, and the reason for that is because our guest tonight, oh, I've been so stoked, can't I've been waiting to talk with him. I've been looking forward to this all day. Um, and our guest is an actor who is no stranger to the acting scene, having been bitten by the acting bug at a young age. He is best known for his portrayal of Nick Fallon on the NBC daytime drama Days of Our Lives and has also started Numbers, Tana Montana, The Mentalist, and The Big Bang Theory. He is currently starring in the upcoming flick, Meth Head, and we welcome Blake Barris. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Ah, it's going great. Uh, I uh, am just so appreciative that you are here with us tonight. I know that you've been crazy busy of late, doing a lot of uh, filming and, and so forth on days, so thank you. Thank you so very much for your time. Absolutely. No, I'm glad, I'm glad to do it. Well, I want to just kind of jump right into things here, and uh, as I mentioned yeah. in, in, a, in my intro, um, acting has pretty much been a part of your entire life. I mean, it, it almost seems like it was in your blood, so talk a little bit about how you got into acting. Yeah, I mean, I guess it wasn't really much of like a, I never really felt like I made a choice in my life to do it. It just kind of was always uh, something that I, I told my parents I wanted to do, so um you know, I told them that, like, age two or, you know, ever, I think probably as young as you can talk, that's what I wanted to do. And it's, I don't know, it just kind of um, kind of stuck. And, um, you know, I, so I did a lot of uh, theater growing up. I uh, did theater in high school, and then I studied it in college, and I uh, then started working professionally after that. Oh, awesome. Now, in, in your career of acting, what do you find to be the most enjoyable thing about acting? Wow. Um I think I think that I think that you know, you know, when it gives my life just a sense of extreme purpose. Um and I think that that's kind of all you can ask for um in life is to feel like your life has purpose and that you enjoy what you do and that um you know, there's times, you know, I feel really lucky and blessed to have a job that allows me to, you know, go into a, a creative zone and, um, you know, and, and, you know, basically play with people and, and make, uh, and make, make believe. Well, and, and, you know, in real life, you're such a nice guy. I will tell you that <laughs> But <laughs> right now, you know, your character, Nick, uh, Fallon on days, uh, he is not, he's probably not one of the most liked characters, uh, on the show no, right now yeah, because of his latest drama. I mean, between he and Will surrounding Gabby's baby, I mean, what would you say is the most misunderstood thing about Nick? Huh. Well, um, I guess I would say that, you know, he he really <laughs> – I don't want to sound like I'm I'm defending his actions because I I think that I I think that there's a lot wrong with Nick and I think that you know he's got a lot to learn uh, in terms of like uh, you know uh, uh, understanding people and compassion and and blah 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 um, but I do think that in as an actor you know you you can't villainize your character and so you have to figure out you know, where, where they're coming from and, and why they're doing what they're doing. And, uh, you know, I, I can't go into all of the reasons Nick's acting the way he is, but I will say that as an actor, I try to craft that it is coming from a place of, of love. And that love is, is, is that he has for Gabby, um, is, is what's driving him. And I think that, you know, um, he is, you know, borderline obsessive about, the love that he has for her and the love that he has for, you know, what he considers to be their daughter. 
Um, and I think that that's driving a lot of uh, what's going on with him. It's not all coming from a place of hate. Yeah, and, and you know, it's interesting that, and I'm glad you brought up the fact that, that Nick does love Gabby because as I've been watching the show, um, and by the way, I, I always grew up a CBS soap girl, but I must tell you, I am so hooked on Dave, I can't really stand it. It is unreal. That's awesome. How, I love to hear that. that. Show, the show has just sucked me right in, and uh, I'm fairly new, but I can tell you, I mean, out of the gate, um, this storyline has just been so interesting to me. It's probably my favorite on the show right now. And but yeah, I think I've, they're doing. I've I agree, had, they're doing a great job. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that I have wondered, um, you know, from the outset is is if Nick really did love Gabby, or if it was, you know, or, or really if it was a genuine love. And you do see, you do see that. And then there are times, you know, when when it gets murky, that you wonder what his intentions are. So I'm glad mm-hmm. that you did clarify that because for me, being a fairly new viewer, um, you know, it, it was kind of hard in the beginning to to figure that out. Um, mm-hmm. his, you know, his character has changed so much. Um, so yeah. it is it is nice to see that. And Gabby too. I mean, she's um, it's kind of how they kind of met and and meshed together. They're almost kind of a great fit in a way, given their backgrounds yeah. and. and it's kind of the dynamic yeah, totally. with they're, them they're, individually. They're both damaged, you know? yeah. And so I think that they, you know, they find a lot of peace in one another. So, um, you know, the character of Nick now is a, a far cry from the computer geek that we originally saw. Do you have any idea that Nick would evolve to the magnitude that he has on the show? Uh, you mean when I came back? Yeah, I mean, you know, initially when you came back, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't know exactly what they wanted to do, but I, I you know, I obviously knew that, you know, he had gone to jail uh, when he left the show. So, um, and I knew that they, you know, they were like, we want to bring him out of jail. And, you know, they did not tell me much, but, uh, you know, they, they, they assured me it was an incredible storyline and that, uh, you know, there was going to kind of be this question mark over his head as to whether or not he was good or bad. And mm-hmm. um, and that was really appealing to me. So um, so, but no, I, I really did not know exactly where I'd end up with this character. Uh, I mean, this the the twists and turns that it takes uh, were surprising even to me. Yeah, I mean, and the writers have done such a phenomenal job of of creating Nick. I mean, and really evolving him to this you know, to this level of, especially coming out of the, the storyline of he went off to prison and now he's out of prison and he's, he's back and, and, you know, all the things that are unfolding as a result of of him having been there and he's here now. And, and you know, it's just a great setup for your return and for the character to kind of continue on, I think. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that they're, yeah, they've really just done an amazing job writing, writing the character in, in a complex, believable way. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, you know, uh, one thing I I wanted to ask you about is that, you know, with Days introducing, you know, a gay storyline into the show, it has been so well received by viewers. And uh, Uh and what what has it been like for you to play the role of being kind of homophobic, you know? Uh, Because I know, uh, you know, I've read in real life, to clarify for the listeners, you're you're absolutely not homophobic in real life, but but the show, you know, how has it been to play that, given that that's not how you truly feel yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, part of me, you know, says, you know, that's that's your job, you know what I mean? Like, you don't, um, you don't get to decide the way your characters think and and what they believe, and uh, you know, that's that's part of being an actor. Um, but that said, when, when the producers told me that this is where the character was going, I was pretty shocked and um, kind of uh, disturbed. I, I really didn't think it seemed right for Nick. Um, uh, so, but then the way, I, with the way that they wrote it, they wrote it with such sensitivity and it was such a gradual thing. And the way that they drew from, you know, the stuff that happened in prison and um, and, you know, the religion that he'd found, um, they really, they justified it in a way that I thought was really honest and 
I really started to believe that this was, you know, just a really important story that needed to be told. And I feel really um, privileged to be able to be on, on this storyline in the show, because I think it is a groundbreaking storyline for the show and for daytime. And, um, and I, you know, it's, so, so that's been exciting. And, and furthermore, I'm always kind of attracted to characters that uh, are, make me explore, you know, something that's really different from myself and um, something that is challenging, you know, to wrap your, <clears throat> your brain around. And so that was, uh, it ended up being a, a really fulfilling uh, task for me to figure out. Oh, yeah. And, and no doubt, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I think that this storyline right now is one of the, you know, the best on the show. It's my personal favorite, but it's really a front burner. I mean, it is really. Thank you. It's, a lot of, show, yeah. it's got a lot of attention and for a lot of different reasons. I mean, because there's so many different layers and dynamics to the storyline. It's not just about Nick and Gabby or the baby or Will and Sonny. I mean, it's so integrated and and it keeps evolving. I mean, just when you think, okay, we're wrapping this up, it, something else comes up, and it's it just true. continues to grow. It's taken on a life of its own almost. And and you guys are to be incredibly commended for the way you've all played it. I mean, it has become Thank very Thank you. I mean, it really is. Viewers. I feel really lucky. The, the group of actors is great. You know, Camille is great. Uh, Chandler is fantastic. You know, it's, it's really a great group of, of young people I get to work with. And then the way, you know, the older actors kind of come in and, uh, you know, Lauren Coslow and, and uh, Galen and, you know, uh, Christian, you know, everybody kind of brings a different element to it. And, um, and, and, you know, working with Ali Sweeney a lot more has been, has been a lot of fun. Yeah. And the thing that I love most, I mean, I've been a, a diehard daytime fan for many, many years. Um, and I won't say how long because that would tell my age, but, <laughs> but <laughs> frankly, I think this is the group on days right now, the younger um, actors, I think are some of the best in the business um, that I've seen in, in the time that I've watched. I mean, the way the storylines are being played and, and, um, you know, and just the way it's all unfolded, it's just, um, it's, like I said, it has sucked me in. I, you know, I um, can't believe how much I've enjoyed watching Days since I started watching it. Just, Thank it's you just so something. much, yeah. Well, the writing has has really, it, it's so reminiscent of, of daytime from, you know, a decade or two ago where you had a lot of different storylines going at one time. All of them were equally interesting. You might have mm-hmm. your favorite, but it just sure, made you want to watch all the engaged. show every day, yeah. you know. Right. It right. never gets boring, right. I guess is a good way to put that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can speak from, you know, in my, my you know, a more limited experience, which was that, you know, I think that the writing – that I'm getting on the show now is is significantly more exciting to me as an actor than it was when I was on the show the first time around. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, one thing I'm interested in, you know, a lot of times I know that uh, viewers sometimes have a hard time separating the real actor or actors from the character they portray. And, and so given everything that's gone on with Nick of late, um, do you ever find that you, you get backlash on social media from the viewers and the fans of the character? And if so, how do you handle it? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, definitely a lot of backlash. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I find it awesome. I think that it's really great that people are care so much and that they're so engaged in the story that they want me to the actor to be fired. Uh, I think that shows kind of like the extent of their passion for the show. Uh, and I don't, I don't take it personally, you know, that people, you know, basically want me to be castrated alive. Um, <laughs> I would hope not. I know. I, I really do think it's, it's, uh, you know, I mean, I, it's, it's obviously, it, it's nice when people do acknowledge, you know, like your, your performance, it's always nice to, for, to have that happen. But, it really does show me that, that, that there's an investment in the writing. And I think that's, you know, uh, a credit to, you know, everybody on the show, the, the writers, the producers, and, and the actors. And, um, I, I am, you know, I'm proud to, to be a part of the storyline, and it, it doesn't bother me, the, the flack that I'm getting. 
Oh, well, and, you know, I've always looked at it like this, you know, where some people may see that as, gosh, oh, my gosh, they're attacking, you know, so-and-so. But I always have, have looked at it this way, is that if you are getting bad feedback, I mean, if you're getting a lot of backlash, that means you're playing your character to the heel, and you're doing something right because you're getting a reaction out of the viewers, which is, yeah, I'm sure, I think the ultimate goal yeah, of the writers, you know? That's it. And, and even if people, you know, hate my guts and, and want to never see me again, yeah, that's what dry, that's what makes you know it's 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 a drama, daytime drama, you know, and so I think it's I think it's good. Yeah, uh, it is. Now, uh, this is an interesting question. If if Nick Fallon were a real person, how would Blake Ferris handle Nick? <laughs> I don't think I don't think I'd want to get to know that guy at all. I don't want to go to ten ten feet near him. This is like an <laughs> asshole. Uh, you know that's that's pretty yeah, interesting. No, you I think, can call I your think character that. Dangerous, yeah, I think he's a dangerous combo because he's. Um, I think Nick is really smart, and when really smart people have like really warped thinking, like it, it it's I think just like a lethal combination because they can convince other people of their warped thinking, and then. There's like lots of people with warped thinking, and, uh, and and you know that's when like that's it's bad. Yeah. Bad things. <laughs> bad things happen. That's very true. So now you've been cast in a number of other shows on television. What do you enjoy most about daytime as opposed to prime time? Hmm. Uh, I think one of the the exciting parts of daytime is is just the pace that you work at. I mean, it's 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 the kind of the the yin and the yang it's it's good and bad because you sometimes you feel like you haven't been able to explore the material to the extent that you would have liked but at the same time you know when you do prime time and you do um a lot of films you you sit around and you wait uh a lot you know that's kind of like the name of the game there's like a saying and people say you know hurry up and wait um yeah and you do and it's kind of draining and and i i you know when i'm at work i you're working the whole time you're running your lines you're you know, trying on your costume for the next day or uh, getting your blocking. You know, you're running around like crazy, and I, I find that exciting and stimulating. And I come home from work not, like, depleted. I come home kind of energized. Well, that's good. You know, there's not a lot of people yeah. that can that can have a long day at work, and I know you guys work some terribly long hours, and, you know, you have pages and pages of script that you're constantly running. I mean, it's, it, you know, a lot of people would just be nearly exhausted, but to come home energized, that's such a plus. That that does reinforce that you're doing what you were meant to do, I would think, you know. I think so, too. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> So now I want to talk a little bit about um, the upcoming movie that you're starring in, Meth Head, and um, mm-hmm. you're playing the character of Dusty. So if you can, tell us a little bit about your character without giving well, anything movie, away. Yeah, sure. Well, the movie is about um, uh, this guy named Kyle who's played by Lucas Haas, and um, he the, the film is about his addiction to meth. He becomes addicted to meth and, and, and his life kind of spirals out of control. I'm, I play Dusty. Dusty's the guy who kind of gets him addicted. He meets uh, uh, Lucas's character and Wilson Cruz's character at a, at a club. I give him the drug. They, you know, uh, Lucas's character loves it. Um, we kind of become friends. Uh, we become closer. He moves into this kind of flop house with me. We eventually start prostituting ourselves. I mean, it gets very dark. Um, but uh, you know, we kind of skate that line of like the, the 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 drug is so fun for a while, and we do all this bonding. There's three of us that kind of do this bonding, and then um, you know, it obviously gets to the point where it, it's not as fun. Yeah. Um, and and what kind of preparation did you have to do for this movie? Um, well, I, I watched a lot of documentaries on the subject to kind of, uh, witness people's behavior and the way that they, you know, behaved when they're on this drug. Cause I was, you know, it was really important to me that I didn't act over the top or, or even in a way that I was going to take away from the story and distract, you know, I, I've seen performances on drugs. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah. Go that way. Um, I've seen performances on drugs where people 
just uh, kind of take it too far, and um, it's it's annoying, and, and you're just kind of like, shut up, <laughs> and, and you don't care mm-hmm. about the character. So it was important to me to kind of um, figure out how to do it with uh, believably and in a way that people were still going to love, you know, this character and that it was uh, and that it was truthful. Um, and the other thing I did was I I stopped eating. I I, I lost. Uh, <laughs> I lost a lot of weight, um, you know, in order to, uh, you know, kind of accurately look like somebody, um, or, uh, you know, so not, not, not that every meth addict is really skinny, but, um, you know, they come in all shapes and sizes, but I thought this guy, uh, I, I thought it, it helped me feel the role in a more intense way to, uh, to stop eating. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, well, when is, um, the movie set for release? So the way it works with with these independent films is um you work you know we're playing festivals uh and we're going to mm-hmm. be doing that probably for the next 6 months. Uh in the meantime, you know there's there's some distribution deals that that we're trying to work out and that we have on the table and it's just a matter of figuring out, you know, the best the best uh way to distribute the film, you know, uh in theaters, uh on Blu-ray, streaming, you know, there's so many different avenues for for content, for movie content to be distributed. Um, so we played DC was our premiere. Um, Gasparilla in Tampa Bay was, uh, you know, was last week, um, which was just such a blast. And um, coming up soon, we're playing in Arizona, playing the Arizona Film Festival in Tucson, the Houston Film Festival. Um, I believe there may or may not, there's some other ones that are not entirely confirmed. There's, we're playing a, uh, a gay and lesbian festival in uh, San Diego. Um, I think there's a couple more on the East Coast, but I can't officially announce all of them yet. Well, and and you mentioned Gasparilla. I want to congratulate you on being the recent winner of the Rising Star Award at the Gasparilla Thank International so Film Festival. Um, and uh, that is awesome. And, well, the reason I was curious is because I, I knew it was independent, but, um, you know, you never know. When it plays these festivals, you just never know where it's going to go from there. And, and I know a lot of your fans, you know, they follow you in everything that you do. And, of course, I'm a fan, and so I'm curious myself, you know, where can we see it, when can we see it again? we see it um that's the kind of thing because i know it's um going to be quite a different role for you versus you know from the nick fallon of the oh, game yeah, world totally, so, it's very, so very different from nick yeah definitely oh, yeah. Not, not anything like the nick character oh yeah well you know and, and in that regard that's good because that does show a different side to your abilities as an actor which is awesome um and so now would you consider doing more movies as time goes on yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I have another one called The House of Last Things, which is also hitting festivals right now. We premiered in um, Gerard Mare, France, uh, and I'm going to Brazil in May for our next festival in um, uh, a big city in Brazil called Porto Alegre. Um, so we have that one, and then I think one in Mexico. It's kind of doing a more international thing, and then I'm sure that one will, you know, will make some announcements for a national a national premiere for that one as well. Um, and I filmed another film in November, which is in post-production. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be able to fit in a, a couple more during my time on days. Awesome. Um, and well, while I'm thinking about it, we have a, a question or two from the chat room. Um, there is someone in the chat room, hang on, I, there that is from Europe that um is listening wow. tonight and yeah oh <laughs> and he uh he was asking uh, he or she is the the screen name is Pilati C A C L A D I. Um but they were asking could you ask Blake if he plans to attend any days fan events? Um I would love to attend uh some more fan events. I've there I don't know if there have been any more announced. Well that's awesome. And he, um, they are also asking you uh, regarding your movie House of Last Things. Are there going to be any more showings of that film in Europe? I think that there will be. Uh, you should ask him where he's from. But I, I heard talk of perhaps one in Spain, a uh, festival mm-hmm. in Spain. Um, but those, there's uh, nothing is totally confirmed yet. All I know is the one in Brazil, Mexico, and uh, maybe one in Spain. But I'm not sure. Okay. 
All right, and um, let's see. I do have a caller on hold. If you'd like to, if you've got time to take a call. Uh huh. Love to. Okay, sure. All right, we're going to connect you, um, Elijah. Hello. Hello. Hi, you're. Oh, they dropped. Uh, they were skyping in, but they dropped. So, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Total no Elijah. Connection Elijah. issue. Yeah, usually they come in via Skype when they're. Um, you know, they come in via Skype, and sometimes it's because they're international, and then things just get crazy sometimes. So, yeah. Um, uh, well, um, let's see. Any other any other exciting things coming up for you in the very near future? I know that as well, the days continue to unfold, we're going to see some amazing storylines. But um, outside of days, anything else? Well, I mean, it's basically these these festivals, you know, that that I have coming up are the are the main things that will kind of take up most of my time off from from days. Um, you know, I, I'll probably I, I like to go to Minnesota in the summer. Uh, I have some family there, and so hopefully I'll take a trip out there this summer. Well, I am so excited about continuing to see you on days, and uh, and. Can't wait to see how the whole story with um, the baby and and you know and what happened to Nick in prison and and all of that kind of coming to fruition and of course summer's coming so th- I think yeah. daytime always ramps up then so it's going to be exciting to see how it all plays out so and I'm yeah I mean I can all tell you, the fans it's, out there yeah it's very I mean they just uh, I can't tell you how well how well written it is and it's it's actually it's like some of the most intense. Um, acting I've ever had to do in my life. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, you definitely deserve a daytime Emmy. I'll be the first to say that. Um, oh, thank because you. Because it's just been phenomenal. And uh, and like I said, uh, this CBS daytime girl, who was always a CBS daytime girl, has certainly been converted to um, to days. I love no it. Doubt. It's just awesome, awesome, awesome. So thank you so very much for what you do and for giving us great entertainment on our screens every day. And uh, we hope that you will be around for a long time to come. Believe me, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you so so very much for being our guest tonight. We greatly appreciate it. I know you've been crazy busy of late, but we do appreciate your time more than you know. And uh, and please, we'd love to have you back um, as things unfold um, for you and your career, and especially if you have any new movies coming out. We'd love to hear about it. Great. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you so much, Blake. Take care and have a great night. You have a good night, too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right, folks, we were just chatting with Blake Barris, and um, if you um, <laughs> you had your chance to call in, we had one caller that Skyped in, but they hung up, and I'm not sure why, but anyway, uh, great, great, great interview with Blake Barris. He is such a nice guy, and you know, that's the thing that I love about um, daytime actors is you see them in character five days a week, and um you know, and, and you see them playing their characters to the hilt. And it's always um, one of those things where I think sometimes it is difficult for viewers to separate, you know, the, the real person from the character they play. And and so a lot of times when, you know, when you hear them in an interview, you almost just automatically expect them to kind of be somewhat the same. Um, although you know they're not going to be, but just because you're so used to the character. But it's always nice to talk to them as the real people that they are, not the characters that they play, and, and really figure out what they're doing and uh, and how they're doing it. And it's just, it's always a lot of fun. And so I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as, as we did. He literally just got off work and got home and walked in the door before he called in tonight. So we are very appreciative for his time uh, because, as you know, he has been on our screens a lot lately with the storyline that is continuing to ramp up, and and I'm sure it's going to continue. It's it's almost like it's just it's just um, kind of in the height of it right now with everything that's um, happening. So, but um, anyway, uh, just a great guy, and I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, coming tomorrow night, we have a band from Los Angeles. They are called Never Wonder. They are a rock band, rock pop and soul. Uh, fused band, uh, that's their sound, and they played a lot of places out in L.A., House of Blues, the Roxy Key Club, the Viper Room, Galaxy Theater, and the list goes on and on and on, and um, 
they are, they've got a brand new album out. And so they're going to actually be here on our show tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Eastern. And, uh, and then coming on Wednesday, you will want to mark your calendars because we will have Rodaric Williams from The Young and the Restless who plays Tyler Michelson, Leslie Michelson's brother, on the show. He will be here Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And then on Thursday, we have another day's guest. We have Miss Kate Nancy, who um, plays the role of Abigail Devereaux on Days, and she will be here at 7 p.m. Eastern. So, uh, and also for those of you who tuned in uh, on um, over the weekend on Saturday night for Leslie Kay, and she didn't call in. She didn't call in because she is on California time. I'm on East Coast time. She thought she was supposed to call in at 6.30 her time, California time, which would have been 9.30 p.m. my time. So we just got our wires crossed on the time. It was a mix-up. But she promptly, promptly rescheduled, and she is actually going to be here on our show uh, Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. So if you are a Leslie K. fan who plays Felicia Forrester on The Bold and Beautiful, be sure and tune in. Uh, on Sunday night at 7 p.m. She will be here. We'll be taking calls. And uh, and, and I've said this before, folks. If you are a fan of, of one of our guests and you really do, are a fan and you you know, you know love listening to the shows, don't be bashful. Please call in and talk to them. I mean, it's a rare opportunity to talk to some of these people, and it's not like watching them on TV every day or seeing them and, you know, reading about them in a magazine interview or in a televised interview in some other capacity where they can't even be touched. I mean, this is up close and personal, and it is your opportunity. So, you know, don't be shy. I mean, they're, you know, they're always glad to hear from you and uh, would love to talk with you. So just bear that in mind. And so with that, that is pretty much going to wrap our show for tonight. And, I, again, we want to thank Blake Barrett for being our very special guest, awesome guy, and I look forward to the things that he has coming uh, down the pipe, as well as continuing to see him play the role of Nick Fallon every day on Days of Our Life. So everyone have a great night. Enjoy your day tomorrow, and we'll be right back here tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Take care all. Good night. Thanks for listening to tonight's show. You can connect to Behind the Mic Radio on Twitter at BT Mike Radio and on Facebook at Behind the Mic Radio. Check out our website at BehindTheMicRadio.com. Also, follow us right here on Blog Talk Radio where you can stay up to date on all upcoming shows. Every episode is available for immediate download upon the conclusion of each broadcast and as always on iTunes. Thank you for joining us. Tonight's show has been brought to you by One Taste of Main Street Cake Shop Baked from scratch custom made cakes and cupcakes And you'll be hooked Every cake is made to order with only the finest and freshest ingredients This is no ordinary bakery Cakes are never pre-made Main Street Cake Shop is in demand Having provided cakes and cupcakes for numerous prestigious events Bridal fairs and venues Owned and operated by April Murray, she has garnered many awards for not only her exquisite cake designs, but also for their incredible taste. If you're looking for a cake for any occasion, or cupcakes in a variety of flavors, then Main Street Cake Shop is the place. Visit them on the web at MainStreetCakeShop.com.